application where the monitoring service can check uh, whether or not the module is doing something and whether or not the page is still infected and decide if more drastic containment is necessary. In addition, I had mentioned that when directives get sent to a web server process, uh, that web server process updates its configuration directives in, in, in shared memory and it basically shares that set of directives with other web server processes so that the web server doesn't need to be restarted to use these new configuration and quarantining directives. And then of course it writes the new directives to disk such that when that web server is restarted, it uses the latest set of configuration directives. So there's a lot of um, future work uh, that, that, that we're doing and for those of you that are interested, there's some uh, mod anti-malware light open source projects that are available. So one of the things that um, uh, we're in the process of doing is adding virtual host support. So currently if you have a dedicated web server, mod anti-malware light works as is. Um, we uh, would like to extend it to uh, support virtual hosts such that if you're serving multiple websites from a given dedicated server, it will do the quarantining appropriately. So the virtual host support is one area. In addition, right now we have uh, shared key authentication with a fairly long shared key, but we can also support, or one area that we'd like to support is certificate-based mutual authentication where you can basically deploy a, uh, a cert on the web server and uh, there's a mutual certificate-based um, uh, authentication. Oh, I'm sorry, on the web server right now, it, um, it, it does check whether or not HTTPS is running and whether the request comes over SSL, but basically the monitoring service um, could use a certificate to prove itself as a client to the mod anti malware module. That's uh, a future work project that's available. And um, then we're also working on supporting uh, automatic, automated deployment of quarantining directives. So for those of you that like hacking on open source projects, please uh, come up to me afterwards and, and uh, let me know. So, where can you learn more? Uh, there is a SourceForge page that we have for mod anti-malware. You can, you can check that out. You can download it from there, check out some of the documentation. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about uh, the monitoring service that Dacient offers, you can check out our website, our blog, our Twitter feed. There's a lot of different uh, resources you can check out. Um, if you're interested in um, you know, this general area, I have a lot of publications and resources on my own personal homepage at uh, neildeswani.com. If you're interested in general in web-based malware attacks, in web security, uh, I'd encourage you to check out Stanford's uh, security certification program. Um, let's see. Um, so that's uh, one area to learn more. And uh, if you want to learn more about web application security, there's my book, Foundations of Security. I'll be raffling off a copy in, in just a second. Um, the, the book has a website, so you can um, uh, ac actually access um, uh, you know, not only the errata, but both at that website as well as at Google's Code University, there's a set of uh, downloads that are available. We've made available chapters corresponding to, I'm sorry, we've made available slide presentations corresponding to each chapter of the book on that, on that website. And so if you need to educate uh, you know, a large number of folks say, at your organization about security, uh, this book is one great way to do it. The book um, covers not only security principles, but it covers uh, web-based attacks, uh, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, client state manipulation. It has a chapter on cryptography as well, or a section rather on cryptography as well. So there's um, you know, pretty, um, you know, pretty good foundational coverage for, uh, you know, for, for, for you if you need to uh, help enable an entire organization uh, to learn more about security. So I think those are the, the those are the key things that I wanted to uh, cover. Um, you know, I think there's uh, a lot of a lot of progress that we need to make uh, in the field in in general, and you know, through. Uh, through technologies like mod anti-malware, it's, uh, it's, it'll be great to not only be able to detect attacks but, but contain them. And the, the, the hope uh, is that we can curtail the spread of web-based malware by using technologies like this. Um, in any case, I, uh, I, I hope that um, you know, some of you, uh, uh, you know, uh, may be interested in, in working together with us on this. More than happy to, um, uh, to, to work together not only on this front, but um, I think what I'll do is, uh, uh, you know, bring my uh, talk to to a close by just saying that you know the internet's been a, a great platform for 
all kinds of uh, new ways to conduct commerce, communicate, and collaborate. And I look forward to working together with uh, the community to continue to make sure that the cyber criminals don't turn it into a, uh, in, you know, into a wreck for all the all the uh, good users that are uh, using it in various ways. Thank you. So I guess what I'll do at this point is I'll take a, a couple questions and then I'll um, uh, raffle off a copy of my book and um, invite folks to come up and pick up passes for our private party. Question. Oh, thanks. It's got a microphone in my face. Um, you, you, the, the, the way it's implemented is you need to connect to my web server via HTTPS, right? Uh, a monitoring service like ours would need to connect to your web server. That's correct, uh, via HTTPS. Is it not possible that you know, for people who, who aren't currently allowing inbound HTTPS connections because they don't have secure parts of their site, could you not implement it the other way around so that I call, I provide you with information and, uh, you know, asynchronously in the background and you you update me on whether what I'm doing uh, is th th that that is, is an implementation possibility. Um, the, the 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 key thing there is that the polling frequency would uh, so so one of the advantages about um, you know the monitoring service making a call is that uh, most websites expect inbound calls anyhow, and. Um, you know basically the second that an infection is detected, the quarantining directive can be sent. Um, uh, if you implement it the other way, which, which, is a, which is a deployment model that could work for some organizations, uh, if you implement it the other way, um, then sometimes there might need to be a request that takes place from, from within the firewall, outside, which could look, look like something malicious is going on. And then the important thing is that if, if that deployment model is, is amenable uh, to, to an organization, then the polling frequency would have to just be often enough such that there, if there is an infection, you want to make sure that polling frequency isn't, isn't too large because then the site could be exposed to be serving web-based malware infections during the interim between polling. But you're not, going to, you're not going to call me every time you know some new dangerous intelligence about the web, right? Otherwise you'll be making connections to my web a right, million that's a right. second. We, the monitoring service, uh, all, it, it, our monitoring only makes uh, connections when an infection has been detected and quarantining directives need to be deployed. Oh, when something's been detected on my site? On your site, that's correct. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, there's another question? On the same subject, would it be possible to do like a self site certificate? I mean, his, his example was, uh, you know, if there's. Would it be possible to do a self signed certificate? His example was if there's mm -hmm. a, a bad. Uh, or you, you don't have a certificate for your website, but you still want to be monitored. Would it be possible to have your monitoring service accept a self-signed certificate so that they don't have to go out? Y and get yes, yes, that is possible. So the okay. question is, can you use a self-signed certificate? The answer is yes. Great, very good. Okay. Okay. I think what I'll do is um, is at this point, uh, I, I'd be happy to take more questions offline, but let me do this. Let me raffle off a copy of my book first. Um, so here's a question. Uh, can somebody name one of Dacient's investors? <laughs> uh, I, uh, so first of all, I need a hand. <laughs> uh, and there's a hand off there to the left. Uh, uh, Google, so the, uh, Google is uh, not currently an investor in Dacient. Another try? Stratton's Glavos, that's correct. Stratton's Glavos, the former CEO of Verisign, is one of Dacian's investors. Uh, please come up for a copy of your book and give him a round of applause. <laughs> or he'll come up and get it afterwards since he's embarrassed to come up. I don't know. Great. Okay, wonderful. Well, um, you know, other than that, I, I appreciated uh, the opportunity to come tell you all about uh, Mod Anti Malware and how it works. My hope is that um, what we can do is, uh, you know, use technologies like this to complete the life cycle of malware prof protection for websites and web servers. Uh, you know, and um, uh, you know, please feel free to, to to you know send any questions about it. But um, if you're interested in coming to uh, a um, private party that uh, Dacient and uh, Sensic is throwing this evening at 9 p.m., we're going to have food. We're have drinks. It'll be a lot of fun. Just come up, and I'd be happy to um, give you a um, uh, you know a private party pass. So see you guys all at the party.